Hi guys, welcome back to our porous restoration series. We're going to call this part three of our rotisserie segment. I um, thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, bring you into the shop and show you some of these props and stands I've made to manage some of these bulky parts. Uh, i got the front bumper here. This is a little bit awkward piece to be working with throughout the entire process. Better to have it up on a stand uh, so you can walk around it. And it's nice and stable. You can sand on it. You can paint it. You can take this clear into the uh, final stages in the paint booth with you. Um, this is holding up the, the front uh, brackets. It keeps it flat. It balances out nice and plenty steady to work with. That takes care of our front bumper. I'd rather have this and uh, have it lean flat on a shelf where you could scratch it or damage it. I also made uh, a three stage uh, movable dolly. This is Got casters on it. This one's a little bit heavy with the two doors and the trunk lid. I put wheels on it so I can move it around and uh, plenty of space between these guys so that you don't accidentally bump something and have to go backwards. Oh my god, you don't want to go backwards. I got a last coat of uh, K36 on these ones. Um, and then the same thing with our fenders. You can see here I've got some uh, horses, some side props. This little side prop here keeps the side kicked out so that they're not rolling around while I'm sanding and painting and working with them on this horse. I'm propped up under there with a 2x4. All 2x4 construction, real simple to make. Nothing specific about their height or dimensions. Just probably whatever's comfortable um, for your height to work with these guys. But it does really make it nice to, uh, to sand them be able to walk around them, get right up close to whatever whatever part of the car you're working on. Um, if it's suspended nicely for you, you can do a much better job and you can sight down it better and get really good results. But just some ideas there to help you move some of these bulky parts around and store them. Also, I can take these into the paint booth and uh, do a real nice job painting with them in this position. Um, then I built a, a rolling shelf system here, although I don't roll it around, I could roll it. This one's so big, I put wheels on that also. You can see the wheels in there. There's six wheels under this guy. This is all our uh, suspension we recently pulled off the car. And so what we're doing here is we're getting everything cleaned up, paint stripping all these parts also, and, um, and then get them ready for sandblasting. Some of these parts will be dipped to get any rust off. You may not want to sandblast them, uh, but some of them, they're real simple parts. These guys here, we'll just blast those, put a real nice paint job on them. And blast all this stuff here. My brake parts, I'm actually going to soak these, soak them in a, in a de-rusting agent. Uh, it's much gentler on the, on the part, and you get a real nice job out of it. I can do a video on that uh, a little bit down the road on how to take care of all the nuts and bolts and some of these smaller parts, you know, really detailed out. Okay, I had a question this morning, a new viewer. He was asking about uh, spot priming and primer surfacer. I'll try and answer that question for you. Oh, by the way, welcome to our channel. Um, okay, so here's our hood. This hood has just gone through our 320 block sanding stage. And uh, everything turned out really nice, but it didn't quite make it all the way through um, so that I can lay down one more complete coat and be done with it. You can see right here we got a little bit of area that didn't quite come out, a little stubborn spot there and we got some metal burn through there and then over on this other side and quite get this out either. You can see it in this light here. Um, it might come out if I just shot one nice coat of K36 over this whole thing but I don't want to take a chance. You really when you're painting um, a real high level paint job, when you get your 320 grit sanding, uh, that's really your last, your last stop to fix any issues in the paintwork that you don't like before you lay down your last coat of primer surfacer. If you're thinking your primer surfacer on your last coat is going to work something out, it's really not safe. If you have to work it hard, you could end up deforming the paint a little bit or putting waves in your paint. So it's really best. In this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a little bit more K36 on there. 
you should hit that area, build it up a little bit, uh, maybe two two coats. Uh, let it cure up for a couple weeks, reblock it. If it's all out, if I can get it out then, um, then we'll shoot this whole hood with one last final coat of K36. So the question was, uh, what about spot priming and the primer surfacer and how they work together? So you can see here, I burn through a few layers, and get it flattened out. That very middle layer there, the darkest layer, that's our original epoxy um, primer coat on the car. Then as we move outwards, kind of like trees on a ring, or rings on a tree rather, uh, as we move outwards, uh, you can see that's our first coat of K36, and that coat would have been sanded to 150 grit. That's where I found my problems and tried to cure it, but I didn't quite get it, uh, as you can see. There's still a little bit of issue in there. So, but on top of that uh, 150 grit, you can see there's some more black. Where did that come from? Um, that's my spot priming before I laid down this layer right here. The reason I lay that down, the reason I spot prime with a epoxy primer is because uh, primer surfacer doesn't really like to stick to bare metal. You really need to have a either a etching primer underneath it or a epoxy primer underneath it if you have bare metal. In this case, uh, I've done my sanding. No bare metal has popped through. So I can treat this area with just K36 primer. I could just go right on top of it and we're not going to have any problems. However, this one over here, you see a little bit of shiny metal burn through. This could be a problem area and we don't want to take any chances with our finished paintwork down the road. So before I shoot my uh, little bit of build on this, I want to spot prime this area. Even though you got to mix up in uh, it's a small mix, you, you need to have the catalyst, you're going to have to have the reducer. Um, you're going to throw probably quite a bit of away just to get it to spray, but you got to spot prime these areas. Uh, otherwise the primer surfacer might not stick. It could pop and uh, just wreak havoc on your finished paint job and it's just not worth taking a chance. So always a good idea to put a primer under your primer so to speak. We want uh, epoxy primer under primer surfacer or we want uh, etching primer under our primer surfacer. I shoot spot primer on any bare metal that I'm going to be working with or any body work, uh, any body fillers. I always put a primer on top of it. Or any fish eyes you're trying to sand out. So also a good idea because uh, there could be oil there and the primer will kill it off. Uh, primer Servicer is a urethane based product. It's very hard, uh, it's very rigid, it's fairly brittle and so that's why it's so sensitive. Um, it's great for bringing things into shape um, but it just doesn't like bare metal. See this guy here is really, really taking shape nice. Um, but I just need to tune up a couple areas. It's not really ready for one last final coat. I'm going to put a little bit of build on here. A little bit of build in that area there. And just a little bit of build right there. Build this up. Maybe one or two more uh, quickie coats in this area. Let it dry for a couple weeks. Reblock it. And then if it works out, everything's good. Then I'm going to shoot this entire fender. It's last go around um, before we do wet sanding. Okay, so there's some uh, some other things you can use for your shop. Other ideas. Always good to have some ideas. Um, I appreciate all the positive comments everybody writes in. Thank you very much. Um, if there's ever anything you have any questions on, please feel free to reach out and ask if uh, if I can help you out with it. I certainly will. All us car car lovers got to stick together. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.